Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening as humbly as we know how, thanking you for the blessings you bestow upon us. We ask you to continue to bless our city. We ask you to bless the citizens who live upon us. We ask you to go into those homes where things are difficult, money is limited, challenges. We ask you to give us the ability to do this job in a fair and just manner. These are all the blessings we ask in thy name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. The clerk will please call the roll. <laughs> Mr. Burfitt? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smeagle? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to excuse Mr. Protegero, please. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Hi. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're glad to have all of you here uh, for the purposes for the meeting tonight. The agenda which we will follow is we have a couple of uh, we have um, four public hearings. We'll take all four of them up at the very beginning of the meeting. At the conclusion of the public hearings, we'll move to the consent agenda, and there are four items there. They're rather perfunctory, and so the council is entitled to vote on each one of these on the consent agenda in one vote, if um, unless one of the council members uh, wants to have something considered separately. Then we'll move to the regular agenda. There are 14 items there. At the conclusion of the regular agenda, um, if any member of the public would like to address the council on a non-agenda item, uh, you'll be given that opportunity. All we ask is that you please advise the clerk of your intention to speak and sign a slip of paper, which I'll call here at the council, at the dais here, but, um, after the after conclusion of the uh, the meeting, um, uh, we'll do all of that in just the way the um, the uh, we'll call the items in just the way they're numbered on the printed docket. Before we begin the regular agenda, though, we do have one really uh, special proclamation for a ceremonial matter. If if uh, the Browns can come up, Jim, would you like to come up and accept? The, uh, the proclamation, or maybe you'll go to the podium there, and I'll read it for you, and it's about Peace Corps Week. And um, it reads, Where, whereas since President John F. Kennedy signed an executive order establishing the Peace Corps on March the 1st, 1961, more than 210,000 Americans have served as Peace Corps volunteers in 139 countries, and in the process have made the Peace Corps an enduring symbol of the United States commitment to encourage progress in the developing world. And whereas Peace Corps volunteers have made significant and lasting contributions in agriculture, business, development, information technology, education, the environment, health, and HIV AIDS, and therefore have improved the lives of individuals and communities worldwide. Whereas Peace Corps volunteers have strengthened the ties of friendship between the people of the United States and those of other countries, and have brought a deeper understanding and appreciation of other cultures and traditions to the United States. Whereas the City of Norfolk recognizes the achievements of the Peace Corps and honors its volunteers, past and present, and reaffirms the United States' commitment to help people throughout the world to help themselves. Now, therefore, I, Paul Frame, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, do hereby proclaim February the 24th through March the 2nd, 2013, as Peace Corps Week in the City of Norfolk. I call upon all citizens to reflect on the numerous and important contributions made by Peace Corps volunteers since 1961. And I have signed this under, given under my hand, the 26th day of February, 2013, by Paul Frame there. Jim, I'll, let me give you this. And we'd love to hear uh, from you. I didn't know you were a Peace Corps volunteer until I found out a couple days ago. But thank you for that, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Sure, yes, sir. Be glad to hear from you. Yes, I'd like to thank Mayor Frame, Council Members, City of Norfolk, uh, for this proclamation on behalf of the return. Peace Corps volunteers of Hampton Roads. There are about 150 to 200 returned <coughs> for volunteers in the area. I was one of the first. I was, I was serving in Nigeria 50 years ago. It uh, had a big impact on my life. Uh, I came back and I studied African history and culture at Indiana University, and Norfolk State hired me in 1968, where I've been basically ever since, although I retired about four and a half years ago. I had the pleasure of sharing offices with William P. Robinson and William Ward and 
I taught Louise Lucas, and I taught uh, two siblings of Yvonne Miller. I've had a wonderful experience here in Norfolk, and I think we'll be here for a little while longer. I want to thank you all again. Well, well, thank you. That's a, that's uh, you've been around some of the great ones, and uh, thank you for your service in the Peace Corps. Thank you for bringing this this matter to us so we could do this uh, this proclamation. Um, the Peace Corps is still a very very valuable uh, service and instrument of. Uh, and they do take retirees, so when you all retire from here, you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks very much. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Public hearing one, please. Public hearing one scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on January 20, 29, 2013 on the application of the Planning Commission to amend the zoning ordinance of the city. Uh, chapter two definitions to revise the definition for used merchandise establishment and to add a definition for used books media sales. Chapter 11 overlay districts to add used books media sales as a special exception use in zoning districts PCO Collie. Uh, PCO 21st Street and C Chapter 6 commercial districts to add used books media sales as a permitted use in all commercial zoning districts and by a 6 0 vote planning commission recommends approval. All right, there are no members of the public signed up to address the council on this matter, so if there are no questions, you can call the roll. Please. I have an ordinance to amend and reordain section 2 3, table 6 5, and table 11 20.3 of the zoning ordinance of the city of Norfolk 1992 in order to allow used books media sales as a permitted use in all commercial districts and to allow both used books media sales and used merchandise sales by special exception in the Collie Avenue and 21st Street pedestrian commercial overlay districts. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing two, please. Public hearing two scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on January 29, 2013 on the application of David and Jane Canton Anderson for a rezoning from I-1 Limited Industrial to C-2 Commercial Quarter and PCO 21st uh, at uh, pedestrian commercial overlay 21st Street districts and B for a special exception to permit mixed uses on property located at 943 through 949 Woodrow Avenue. A 6 0 vote planning commission recommends approval. All right, there are no members of the public signed up to, uh, to oppose the matter. However, we do have Jane Canton here as the applicant, Jane Canton Anderson, as well as Robin Thomas to answer questions if anyone has any. Okay, on the um, They've got Canton spelled C-A-N-T-O-N in the public hearing notice, but it's I-N, I think, Mr. Mr. Clerk. But uh, if if it's okay with you, we'll go ahead and call the vote. Is that all right? Okay. I have two ordinances. The first is an ordinance to rezone properties located at 943 to 949 Woodrow Avenue from I-1 and pedestrian commercial overlay 21st Street District to, I mean, 2C2, the PCO 21st Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. And the second is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit mixed uses on properties located at 943 to 949 Woodrow Avenue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. All right, good luck. But with, with the project, I think it's going to be a terrific one, I hope. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the investment as well. Public hearing three. Public hearing three scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on January 29, 2013 on the application of J. Maynard Construction to change zoning from C1 Commercial Corridor District to R1 to R9, one family district on property located at 1102 to 1108 Wilson Road. By 3-3 vote, Planning Commission recommended uh, the request be denied. Okay. Roscoe Calloway. And uh, um, there are no members of the public signed up to, to oppose this, but we have a negative vote from the Planning Commission, right? A uh, three-three tie. A three-three tie. Okay. Roscoe Calloway. Roscoe, do you want to make any comments or are here just to answer questions, as is Jeff Maynor? And Okay. All right. Does anybody have any comments? It, anybody have any questions? It was presented with QR Street. It's Colon Avenue. It is. That's the Colon Avenue. Frank, do you want to? That's the one that was presented to us with Hugh Hart Street. Right. Yeah. We didn't like the lot configuration before, right? Right. But I think it's supposed to face Colon Avenue. That's important. They're making them face Colon Avenue. Y'all want me to address it? No, we, we got, I think we got it here, Mr. Calloway. Thank you. I, I believe the only concern of, of the Planning Commission was that Mr. Maynard did not go for a conditional rezoning 
which would ensure that the homes would be able to be reviewed um, right. for their design. Right, but we also had an issue about which way the homes were going to be faced. For there was also a concern from our staff, our side, as to how that the lots would be oriented, which could only be done through a conditional rezoning. The property is going to face Colon Avenue, the homes. That would be an issue you'd have to talk to Mr. Maynard. We have no ability to require that without a conditional rezoning. All right, well, then Frank said, uh, Mr. Maynard. Mr. Maynard. Mr. Maynard. Uh, and you are Jeff, for the record, Jeff Maynard, Jeff Maynard. M-A-Y-N-O-R, and you're at 1181 Kingsway Drive. That's correct. Right. And, um, and which way are the properties going to face? Which one the doors? The properties, are? they'd all face Collin Avenue. There are three of them. One's a 50 foot by 125, okay. 40 by 125, 40 by 125. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely the one that's 50 by 125 that's on Wilson Road. You really couldn't. 50 feet wide, 25 foot set back. <laughs> 25 in the back. Okay. You can't have it facing any other way but Collin Avenue. All right. Got it. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. I have an ordinance to rezone properties located at 1102 to 1108 Wilson Road from C1 to R9. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing four. Public hearing four scheduled for this day uh, under state law to change the name of the United Way precinct to the Lake Taylor High School precinct and to change the voting place of the United Way precinct from the United Way building to the Lake Taylor High School and to temporarily relocate the voting place of the Chrysler Museum precinct to the Chrysler Museum Glass Studio. And I have an ordinance for that uh, to amend and reordain the title of Section 14.1-62 United Way Precinct so as to change the name of the precinct to Lake Taylor High School Precinct to amend subsection 14.1-7529 so as to change the name of the precinct from United Way Precinct to Lake Taylor High School Precinct to amend section 14.1-85 Chrysler Museum Precinct so as to temporarily change the location of its voting place and to amend section 14.1-128 United Way Precinct so as to change its name to Lake Taylor High School Precinct and change the location of its voting place. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Uh, Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? I just wanted to say I wanted to thank Ms. Long um, and her staff for getting back with me after I brought up some concerns with it. They did go out and reinvestigate the property. I still have concerns about it, and I know that they have a um, tight space over there. All, all I'm asking is um, that you continue monitoring in and, and the next election. If it looks like it's causing problems, that we maybe relook at this a year from now and see. I, we've, we did have a, a great discussion as a council about voting lines and things and voter suppression. I'm just worried, you know, with the distance and where this is located. I know they're going to address the signage, but if we can just monitor it um, and m make sure that um, we keep our citizens happy um, with this. But aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Let me make one other uh, comment about uh, Lake Taylor. What, didn't we have an ordinance at one point or wasn't there in the notion it was coming out of I don't know whose office it was coming out of, that it, the, the street that leads uh, to the front of Lake Taylor High School, we were going to rename that Titans Way. Anybody? They've got a sign up there that says it already. But I mean, but I, I'm not sure we've actually, this is in, in especially in honor of the state football championship, they might have a they name up there. A sign up there. Have, but we, it's a designation like, yeah, I think you're right there. Right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, especially in light of how well the girls' basketball team did the other night. All right, consent agenda. Uh, there are four items on the consent agenda. Would any member of the council like to have any one of these members, one of these items considered separately? Okay, call the roll, please. Approve the consent agenda, Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Spiegel? Aye. Dr. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1, please. R1 is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an eating and drinking establishment on property located at 217 Gray Street, and by a 6-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R2. 
an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the construction of a commercial communication tower on property located at 2031 Phelps Avenue by six zero vote planning commission recommends approval. And Lisa Murphy, the attorney for the applicant, is here to answer questions. If we have any. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3? An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an entertainment establishment on property located at 332 Granby Street by 6 0 vote planning commission recommends approval. Mr. Colston, James Colston is here to answer questions if anyone has any. Mr. Colston, are you? Here, there you go. Okay. Thank you. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smagel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4, please. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption on property located at 4500 Pretty Lake Avenue, Unit 106. And for both 4 and 4A, Mr. President, it's a 6 a vote from the Planning Commission for approval. And Robin Thomas is here to answer questions if anybody has any still. Okay, call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. And 4A is an ordinance granting a special exception to operate an entertainment establishment on property located at 4500 Pretty Lake Avenue, Unit 106. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? I R5. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a religious institution on property located at 1101 Jamestown Crescent. A 6 0 vote planning commission recommends approval. And Mr. Dave Linetti is here to answer questions, is the proponent, and so is Gary Chevarotti. Hey, Gary, how you been? Okay, call the roll. With the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt, Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7. Six, Mr. President. Six. I'm yes, sorry. I got so. I'm sorry. An ordinance approving a Fourth Amendment to the lease between Janif Office Building LLC and the City of Norfolk for premises in the Janif, Janif Office Building at 5900 Virginia Beach Boulevard. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7. An ordinance granting a downtown development certificate to permit the construction of a mixed-use building at 416 Bush Street by 7-0 vote planning commission recommends approval. Now, what is this all about? No, I'm sorry. Mr. Rick Ken is here to answer questions if anybody has. Okay, it's a great project. Okay, go ahead. Back you no. pay by the hour. No. All right, call Dis it. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? I R8. An ordinance accepting a Virginia Domestic Violence Victim Fund grant award of $40,000 from the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services for the support of personnel costs for a program paralegal to ass assist in the prosecution of misdemeanors and felonies involving domestic violence, sexual abuse, stalking, and family abuse, and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds for the employee's payroll and medical benefit coverage expenses. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Whoa, whoa, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whoa. Ellis James, please. Ellis, I was looking at a head on the docket. My, my mistake. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the council, Mr. City Manager, my name is Ellis W. James. I reside in the city of Norfolk and have all my life. Um, I did want to at least speak from the public's perspective in support of this item. This is a very, very serious problem <coughs> that we are confronted with, not only from the standpoint of what the women are confronted with especially, but also across the spectrum. And I think it's appropriate for citizens and taxpayers to indicate clearly that they are fully in support of this grant. And I have confidence that our administration will administer these funds in such a way that it will be a benefit to the community. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you for those comments, uh, Ellis. Okay, you can continue the roll now. Sorry. Um, I was uh, Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Um, R9, 
an ordinance permitting William J. Frizzell and Susan M. Kaufman to encroach into the right-of-way of Colonial Avenue with an overhead vine loop frame added to an existing gate and post portion of an existing fence to be re relocated on top of a new 16-inch high maximum height brick retaining wall and a square brick column at 502 Fairfax Avenue. This has been reviewed and recommended by Design Review and the Planning Commission. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Whip? <clears throat> I'm curious about this. This came up, what, four, six years ago? And I just wondered where this came from. Is, is anybody here <coughs> speaking on this? I think before it was a gazebo or something they built back then. And so this is a new this is piece. Different. Is there any objection in the neighborhood? I didn't, I'm not objecting to it. I just was wondering why it had taken us so long to <laughs> deal with it. But different. you're saying these are two different things. Yes, this is different. Okay. Then that's even better. Great. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R10. An ordinance permitting open MFG LLC doing business as X tuple to encroach three, three feet five inches more or less into the right of way at 119 West York Street with a three and a quarter inch by 16 foot sign, a first floor awning that encroaches four feet and is 16 feet two inches long with the bottom of the awning eight feet above the sidewalk and a second floor awning that encroaches two feet and is 16 feet two inches long. This was reviewed by Design Review and Planning and recommended. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or 11. An ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund to International House of Pancakes of $4,807.34 plus interest based on the correction of the business personal property tax assessments for tax years through 2012. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? This is not us. Aye. This is the result of the ordinance. You got the mayor. Breck, you got to call me. Pardon me? You getting, I don't think you called me. Oh. Uh, Mr. Frame? <laughs> <laughs> no. <getting> yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought okay. I had. No. R13. I had your vote down. <laughs> okay. Okay. R12. R12. An, or an ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund of business license taxes to Seven Seas Welding Services, Inc. of $3,418.39 plus interest based on a correction of the business license tax assessments. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Bernard, could you speak to these these three? Um, this one um, moved to Virginia Beach during the tax year where the refund is paid, and uh, the, it's reported that the uh, company's accountant uh, filed in the wrong jurisdiction, so this is a, a correction for the movement. Okay. So all three of these are? <clears throat> uh, no. Um, the, the previous one was uh, erroneous filing for uh, the uh, um, business personal property tax. The filer had listed property. Uh, more property than it had, and upon discovering it, sought to correct it, and that was the reason for the first one. Okay. All right. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Are we at R13? Yes, sir. An ordinance uh, directing the city treasurer to issue a refund to Insight Training Group LLC of $3,745.63 plus interest based upon the correction of business license tax assessments for tax years 2010 through 2012. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Yes, we do. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R14. An ordinance to schedule a city council meeting on Tuesday, March 19, 2013 at 7 p.m. I talked to the manager about this. This is so we can have at least two night meetings a month so we can have meetings to vote on. And I think the council has discussed this sort of thing in the past. So, okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Uh, you have an add on? Two additional items, uh, Mr. President. The first is a letter from the city auditor requesting confirmation of Ms. Tammy Getter as an assistant city auditor to effective March 11, 2013. Um, approve the appointment, Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. 
Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. And R16 is a resolution appointing 31 persons to the Mayor's Commission on Poverty Reduction. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. President. Okay. Thank you, Greg. There are three members of the